if you're new here, my name is Alejandra. I am a language coach and I help people to successfully learn languages as they enjoy the process of doing so. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe down below because I make weekly videos about language learning strategies, mindsets, and success. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about why Spanish grammar is so hard. Let me start by saying that I know it's hard, not just because of the grammar itself, but also because of the way that grammar has been taught um, over the course of the years. You know, you've got the typical, you know, subjunctive, reflexives, por y para, prepositions and things like that. So I know that it can be really hard to, you know, try to understand them in, you know, like all of these aspects in such a way that it's, you know, that it makes sense. So what I want to tell you before we even start is that we all have to express the same reality. This is really important when it comes to grammar as well, because if you understand that generally in the world, we all have to express the same feelings or similar situations, like we all have to talk about past experiences or what we hope for the future or what we're going through in the present. So if you understand that, then that's going to be really helpful for you because you are going to approach grammar in a different way. So it is because we all have to express the same reality that if you are the one that is learning Spanish, then that means that it is up to you to decide what you want to say first, what you want to express in the first place, and then try to find the linguistic resources to be able to do so in Spanish. And so with this in mind, let me just start saying that Spanish grammar is not hard. I know it's crazy, but what is hard is the approach. We've failed so many times at teaching grammar properly because we have always done it from the point of view of the language. So that means that this is the language and you are here and you have to kind of adapt to the language, right? And uh, we haven't really taken into consideration that it could be the opposite. Let me explain. What I want to say is the best way that you can actually learn Spanish grammar or any grammar is by first acknowledging that you are the speaker. That gives you a certain authority. That gives you a certain role that is really important. So it is up to you to decide what you want to say. It is your responsibility. So it's not about the language being here and you having to adapt to the language. It's adapting the language to what you want to say. What is your intention? What do you want to convey? What are the things that you want to talk about? Because once you're able to decide the things that you want to talk about first, then you're going to be able to find the linguistic resources I was mentioning earlier. And so grammar is hard because we don't take into account what we want to say first. And it's so funny because we do it very easily with vocabulary. So we have, let's say, a television, right? And uh, we know that that's an object and we know that that's the same reality and I want to understand how to say that in English. And so I say, okay, that's a TV and it is that TV. And in Spanish is televisión or tele. So the same thing has basically, I mean, in this case, the words are very similar, but we're using two different words in two different languages to describe the same thing. So it's it's funny because we do it in vocabulary uh, very often, but we don't do it in grammar. And uh, my hope for this video is that you understand that grammar is not necessarily hard. You just have to find the common reality that you're trying to express and then find, you know, the, the resources that we use. Let me give you an example. So you've probably heard of the so-called reflexive verbs in Spanish. And and uh, you have tried to learn them, you've tried using them, but somehow there's just always something that you can't get your head around. And uh, it can definitely be hard. But let me ask you this. Do you know why we use reflexive verbs? Because it isn't the why that you can find the answer on how to actually use them. So we use them to reflect or talk about actions that I perform and that I also get the consequences from. So let's say I me lavo las manos, I wash my hands. I am the person who washes my own hands and therefore my hands get cleaned. So let me ask you this. Do you think you have the same need? Do you think you have the same need uh, of expressing actions that somehow have the consequence on, the, on you, the person that um, performs the action? 
Yes, yes you do. And let me give you an example. I wash my hands. That is a perfect example of a reflexive action. I am performing something and therefore my hands get cleaned. So whether in Spanish or in English, the result is the same that my hands get washed or cleaned. There is a difference. The only difference is that in order to express the same exact reality, the fact that an action falls on me or the person that is performing the action, is that I just use different types of, 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 of resources. In Spanish, I use reflexive verbs. In English, in this particular case, I use a possessive, a possessive determiner. So in this case, my, because I am washing my hands, not your hands. So it is because of the my, in this case, that you know in English that it is your hands that are getting washed. In Spanish, however, it is because of the first me, me lavo las manos. Because if I, the, the direct translation would be, um, I wash the hands, I wash myself the hands. It would be kind of weird. But in Spanish, it makes sense that it's because of the me that we know that I'm referring to my hands. What I'm trying to say is that this is a perfect example of English and Spanish having different resources to express the same thing. And so to make grammar easier, just first decide what you want to say. First decide in your native language, what is it that you want to say? Because it is only until you're able to decide what you want to say that you'll be able to make sense of the grammar. It is not the other way around. You don't learn the grammar and then start saying things. You first decide what you want to say, and then you're able to kind of make sense of, of, of how we use Spanish grammar. I encourage you to stop learning grammar in the same way that it's been taught. Don't expect different results when you have, you know, when you're doing exactly the same thing that it's been done over the course of the years. Rather, try to shift your perspective, try to shift your, just the way that you've been doing things and uh, you will find that not only will grammar make more sense, but the world will, will make more sense in Spanish if this is the language that you're learning. Also remember, grammar is at your service. It is not the other way around. It is not you having to learn this language and trying to figure it out. It is you deciding what you want to say, you being the speaker, the main role in language to make sense of you know the world that is around you in Spanish. So you are the speaker, give yourself that value, give yourself that role and uh, start deciding. Decide what you want to say. If you want to talk about the past, then look for the resources that there are in Spanish to talk about the past. And uh, it is only when you're able to do that that you make sense of the world and grammar makes a lot more sense. And remember, think about it in terms of vocabulary. We, we do this in vocabulary all the time. We know that, oh, this is a window. In Spanish, is ventana. Oh, it is the same thing, but just have different words. It is the same in grammar. With grammar, we just simply you know, instead of it being things and objects, we just use different structures. So do that and it'll be so much easier. Okay guys, this is the end of this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. So don't forget to subscribe down below and like this video if you have. And also let me know in the comments, is Spanish grammar hard for you? What are the aspects that you find more difficult um, about grammar, Spanish grammar? Let me know and I would love to see you guys next time. Bye.